Hey guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Get Corporate Ready. In this episode, what we'll be speaking about is some quick basic tips around how to go about with salary negotiation. Now, this is not something that a lot of graduates do within the space that I'm in. So I've tried to do a bit of research for you guys to just give you some tips on how you can go about negotiating a salary, when is the right time to start negotiating a salary, and what are some of the things that you should be mindful of as you go about negotiating. Hey everyone, for those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Bosale Bayile. I'm a young talent specialist and really using this platform to give tips and tricks around how you can get corporate ready. Now, in this episode, as I've said, we're talking salary negotiation. So one thing that I want to mention about salary negotiation is really always make sure that you are in a position where you've already been made an offer before you start talking salary. You'll recall from one of my videos that I've done before, where I do speak to you guys about some questions not to ask in an interview. So if you're still going through interview phase, it's not the right time to be asking about salary, how much is the role going to be? This is what my expected salary is. You wait for that to be negotiated with you by the hiring manager or by the recruiter. And then at that point is an opportunity for you to start talking salary, right? So the only reason for you to be negotiating a salary is once you've been made an offer actually, and once you've been given an opportunity to assess what it is they're offering to you. And when you then start assessing for yourself, whether this is something that you are happy to take or whether you're not happy to take, then some of these tips are going to come in handy for you. So one thing to always be mindful of is if in an interview you asked about what salary you expect, it's always important for you to speak about a range as opposed to giving an exact number because typically when they do ask you this, they haven't disclosed what their range of salary is going to be. And so by keeping it open and understanding what the range of salary is also gives them some leg room in terms of what they can work within. But also every company has a range, which also allows them some wiggle room in order to assess what it is they want to offer you for this particular role. So one of the first things that's important for you to always speak about when you are negotiating a salary is talking about the company's growth, right? So showing them that you believe in the growth of the company, indicating to them where you see yourself fitting in as part of someone that's going to add to the growth of the company. And so there you speak a bit more about what your value add is going to be but also then finishing off with a counter offer, right? So this is assuming they've made your particular offer. You aren't happy about the offer and you feel like it's too low. And so this is an opportunity for you then to give a counter offer, right? So before you even go straight into giving a counter offer, you speak about the company, their growth, where you see yourself fitting into the growth of the company and how you're going to be adding value. And then being able to ask them, are you able to meet me at my expectation? The second thing that's quite important for you to be mindful of is that when you do your research, make sure that you are using industry standards, right? So always make sure that you are researching exactly your title, the type of role that you are going into, and what the salary benchmark is within the country, right? So within South Africa, what is the salary benchmark for this particular role? You'll get a couple of different websites and articles that you could re read through to get somewhat of a range and that's the range that you then need to use right but make sure that you're getting industry standards right so within the industry that you are applying into how much are these people at this particular level earning then what you need to do is go back to what it is that i am earning and how does this match with what the range actually is what is my kind of best outcome when it comes to this particular salary range so one thing to just mention why it's important to do research, don't put your personal reasons as why you want to get a particular salary, right? I think everyone has their own personal reasons and their own personal expenses that they need to take care of, but you never lead in a discussion with, well, you know, I've got a home and this is where I live and it's quite expensive, as you know, and my kids have to go to private school. And so you never lead with your personal reasons and personal circumstances when, you, when you're negotiating a salary. You research, you look at industry standard for your particular role, and you assess based on that what the range is that's going to be comfortable for you against that standard. The next tip, I think this is particularly for those of you that are given offers that are lower than what you are currently earning. I think it's always important during this time to help the company understand what your salary history has been, right? 
And so I think it's important for you to always prepare for these kinds of discussions and questions. So you help them see what it is you've been earning over the past couple of years. Also lead with the fact that I'm really excited about this opportunity, really excited about working for this company. I definitely see some synergies in the opportunity for us to grow as a company and how I can add value to that. So with this company being the position to give me this particular salary, right? So I think when you are given a salary that's less than what you are currently earning, always try and make sure that you can at least get it to match what your salary is. But this is if you are desperate, right? If you're desperate for the role, maybe you've been in the in the market for a while and you haven't received a job. I think this is how you then go about having this kind of discussion, right? So by showing them the history also gives them an indication of what you did earn before you were off the market or what you are currently earning in your current role. And this will almost help them have a sense of the value that you're going to bring to the company, and if the budget is tight on their end, are they able to meet you where you currently are? The next thing I think is important to always know with, with salary negotiation is don't be shy to ask the company what their salary range is. I think with every company, there is a salary range that they uh, adhere to for the particular roles that they are uh, recruiting for. So there's always space for negotiation, right? They never go into um, hiring someone for a particular position and just say, well, we're hiring for this particular amount, right? They always have a range that they're willing to work within. And so ask them as well, what is what was the ideal range for you guys for this particular role? So never be afraid to ask that when you do receive an offer that you maybe are unhappy about. And once they do give you a sense of what the range actually is, and you do feel there's scope for you to move further up, then you ask them whether there's opportunity for you to move up further up within that range by substantiating once again, what it is you bring into the table. So the next thing that you can actually look at to substantiate why you would want a higher salary is by looking at the level of responsibility. So I'd suggest that you go back, look at what it is that you are currently doing in your current role, but also assess it against what the new role actually is. And if you find there are pockets of elevated levels of responsibility, maybe where you're currently working, you don't manage people, now you are expected to manage people, something like that, where you can see that there's a significant change in the level of responsibility in your role, or there's additional portfolios that you are looking after in comparison to where you currently are now, that is an opportunity for you to then open up the discussion and have an open conversation about, once again, facts. The fact is that the role is a lot more than where I currently am, and can we have a conversation about this? And lastly, what I think is also important for you to be mindful of is that where the company isn't able to increase the base salary that they're willing to give you, and the company could have a lot of different reasons why they can't increase it, but where they aren't, look at your total cost to company, right? So look at your entire compensation package and start understanding where there are opportunities for you to then gain a bit more through different means. And by different means, what I'm talking about is some companies will offer sign on bonuses. Some companies will offer uh, really comprehensive packages when it comes to how they give bonuses and increases on an annual basis. Understanding maybe if there's opportunity where you can get a bit more leave, uh, where there are other benefits maybe that the company offers that you're able to tap into, right? So depending on your level of seniority, some people are able to negotiate whether it's cell phone allowances or canteen allowances, whatever the case may be, depending on your level, some levels do get access to some of these things. So if you're not able to increase the base salary that you're getting, ask the company more about some of the benefits that come with it and where there are opportunities to leverage off some of those in compensation for not being able to get the salary that you would like to get. For those of you that are going into other institutions like banks, you immediately get employee rates when it comes to banking um, and that is something that is definitely worth considering because you know whether you're buying a house buying a car the rate at which you'll be paying that um, is very different to what someone external to that company would be paying so always find out what are the perks or other benefits that come with the role and if the base cannot go up and meet your salary expectation try and see what other benefits are there and whether there is opportunity for you to maybe assess 
how that can then compensate for that as well. Guys, I hope that you found that really helpful. Um, just giving you some tips that I've obviously done some research on and different ways of you guys to just think about how you can go about having the salary negotiation conversation. Now, the important thing that I think is always beneficial for you to know is that have the conversation when you know that you meet the requirements of the role, when you know that the company really likes you and they're keen about having you in the company. It's also beneficial to have these kinds of conversations when you know you're not desperate to find a job, right? Because that gives you the opportunity to then have these conversations and the risk is lower then, right? So if you don't get this role, then it makes it okay because you're not necessarily desperate. But when you are desperate, I think it's important for you to really be careful around how you go about having the conversation and knowing what your limit is in terms of how much you can push for what it is that you're looking for. Um, ultimately, I think these are great ways for you to angle your conversation. Remember never to make it personal, but to remain factual and speak through some of the pointers that I've given you in this video. Up until next time, have a lovely week further.